Hey there, welcome to this week's episode of Bloomerang TV. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with us for a few minutes here today. Uh, my name is Steven. As always, I'm your host here at Bloomerang, and I'm joined by uh, my good buddy, Simon Scriver. He is the director of Total Fundraising, and he's also the head of fundraising at One in Four Ireland. He's joining us all the way from Ireland. What's up, Simon? How you doing? Hey, Stephen. I can't believe I'm your buddy. Your buddy. That's uh, that's an honor. Thanks. You are. You are. Hopefully, you feel the same way about me. <laughs> Let's see how the call goes. <laughs> so, director of total fundraising. You're also head of fundraising at an awesome nonprofit in uh, in Ireland. Can you tell us a, a little bit about the work you're doing over there? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, I'm wearing two hats. So, as total fundraising, we're an agency that help uh, big and small charities do better fundraising um, in lots of different ways and that's great, I love that. And then my other hat is head of fundraising at One and Four. One and Four is a uh, really small charity that works with survivors of sexual abuse in Ireland, um, which there's a lot of, um, and they do amazing work and I help them raise money, hopefully. Yeah, you do. You do a lot of good work too. I have, I really like you, Simon, because uh, <laughs> you you don't pull any... You're a first. No, you tell it like it is. You know, we've kind of become friends on social media. You have an awesome blog at uh, Total Fundraising, which everyone should read. You also Thank speak you. at events and in addition to being a fundraiser. And what I like about you is you're not afraid to call out um, bad fundraising advice. Is that, is that a fair statement to say? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I suppose um, I'm in a fortunate position sometimes where I don't have to... Um, I don't have to be extra polite, but I mean, I, I believe in giving credit where credit's due. I mean, I love your blog, and I love your writing, and I love your speaking, and um, and there's some really good fundraising out there. But obviously, you know, sometimes there's bad fundraising, which is okay, um, but sometimes there's people who um, pretend bad fundraising is good fundraising, which I think is, is not okay, and, mm -hmm. um, and, and that could be pretty damaging to the sector. So I think, you know, sometimes if there's bad stats or bad fundraising, I think we need to... Um, talk about it and call it out and, and you know share our failures so that we as a sector become better at what we do. So we live in an age where it seems like everyone has a blog, you know, lots <laughs> of people are speaking, people have podcasts, people are doing videos and newsletters. There's a lot of fundraising advice out there and it seems like, you know, the, a common, you know, everyday fundraiser at a nonprofit, they can kind of be overwhelmed by all this content, and, and I'm I'm adding to it. You know, I'm I'm just as guilty <laughs> as anyone. How do you? Because you're a fundraiser as well as a content creator. How do you look for advice, and how do you kind of know what's good, what's bad? Do you just read everything, and you have to you know stay up all night to keep up on it? You know, what do you, what advice would you give to a fundraiser who's just looking for help? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, the support what you said, you know, everyone, it's very easy for us all to have a voice now, and people like me and you to pretend we're experts. <laughs> like we've become, you know, um, like because of the internet we can share uh, incorrect news and incorrect stuff quicker than, than ever and, and we have to be really careful about that. So I mean in terms of finding the um, right stuff, I think, I think yeah you have to read a lot, like as fundraisers we do have to read a lot and, and sometimes we don't read enough. But then you begin to filter um, you know, and find the people that share share good stuff. You know, the people who have proven track records, people who become reliable. And there's some there's some really good names out there on Twitter and and blogs um, who consistently share good stuff. So it's just about I think finding them. Um, but I mean, anytime you read this stuff, it's not just fundraising. It's it's everything. I mean, you have to be a little bit cynical, mm -hmm. and you have to you have to question a lot of it. You know, and you have to question. You know why is this person telling me this? Is it because they're trying to sell something, which you know most of the time um, they are. Yeah. Um, but you know, so when you read this stuff, it's it's about not taking it at face value, but being being critical of it, being um, you know questioning of it, and talking to other people in the sector and and trying to find stuff that backs up before we take it as as tried and tested, um, and and try and do it. You know, there's no point in in, in innovating and doing this like futuristic stuff when when there's a lot of um, data and a lot of evidence to show that the old stuff is still working um, so it's just it is reading a lot but it's you know it's about being cynical and, and fine-tuning what you're reading and who you who you're believing I suppose so speaking of uh, these things that we're talking about there's this weird uh, stat that keeps popping up and you and I joke about it a lot 
something like 50% of people who watched a video on a nonprofit <laughs> website went on to donate. What is that, and why do those stats? Why are those so pervasive and end up ending up in every presentation and quoted wildly? Like, what's going on there? <laughs> Yeah, I mean that. Like that's that. Um, it was some really bad research um, that was done, which is just completely, completely not true. And it said that if fifty-seven percent of people who watch a video go on to make a donation, so uh, you know every second person who watches your video will donate. Wow. And I think, um, yeah, like it's not true. Don't don't be, don't be amazed. It's not. True. But I, but I think like we all wanted it. We all wanted it to be true, and mm-hmm. I think you know when we see these stats, you know, you know, especially most of the stats you see are online, so they favor online fundraising. You know, they're put right. online by people who like online, and so I think we want to believe them because it would make our job so much easier if every second person watched the video. Um, so as we started to see that stat get shared by more and more people without questioning it, you know, and, and even if you took, I mean, I think you said it, before, it just took 10 seconds to think, <laughs> okay, do I, do I donate to every second video I watch, you know, <laughs> are, is every second person donating to this, and, and you realize that it's just complete um, rubbish, you know, it right. just doesn't make sense. So I think, yeah, I mean, we have to kind of, um, you have to kind of use, use a bit of common sense sometimes with these stats, um, you know, really take the time to look back as, as to what the source is and really, you know, before you share any of this stuff, be careful um, because people are making decisions on it and people who aren't as smart as you and as smart as fundraisers, you know, some of the fundraisers out there is um, they're making budget decisions on this, you know, and small charities are putting their budget into video because they think 50% of people are going to donate to it and they're not. Right. So, you know, we, ha- we have a responsibility because of the causes we work with, we have a responsibility to be careful with these stats. Um, you know, I, I think like, like the the overall message with fundraising is fundraising is hard, mm-hmm. and no matter what anyone tells you, you know, if you see the word revolutionary or the future or undeniable, you know, these are all buzzwords that basically mean, you know, be careful. Yeah. Someone tells you this, it's it's going to revolutionize fundraising. It almost certainly isn't going to revolutionize <laughs> fundraising. Fundraising is always going to be hard, and it's going to be a slow, steady thing. And and you just have to remember that when you see these stats and you see people pushing this stuff out, I think. So what about putting the good advice into action? You know, you, you think critically about something, it seems like it's on the level, it's coming from a reputable source. Mm. How do you go about, you know, experimenting with maybe new ideas or trying something that, that it looks like other people are having success with? Do you do you just kind of dip your toes in the water and see what works or you know, how how do you go about actually following <laughs> advice that you find that you think is good? Yeah, I think like um, I mean, for me, like like every good fundraiser tell you testing, you know, and and you got to test this stuff on small scales before you um, before you put any real money behind it. And I think you know, if, especially if you're a medium or big charity, you have you sometimes have the luxury of being able to test this stuff before you roll out. If you're a small charity, I mean. Firstly, you have to be critical, and, and um, there's a good organization in, in England, uh, Rogare Fundraiser, um, Ro- Rogare, Rogare uh, run by a guy called Ian McQuillan, and he talks all about critical fundraising and that we have to really all as a sector um, critically look at this stuff before we use it or before we do it. I'm paraphrasing what he says, but I think, you know, when the stuff is out there, we shouldn't just take it as fact. Like, we as a sector need to share this stuff and have an open discussion we need to share our failures as well as the successes and, and really talk through experiences so that we're not all making the same mistakes um, over and over again. Um, but yeah, and, and then if you are a small charity and you don't have the luxury of testing and the luxury of, of a budget, a big budget, you you know, there's nothing wrong with sitting back and waiting to see what happens, you know, mm-hmm. just because um, people are saying, you know, the future is Bitcoin or the future is online or something like that. You know, you have years, um, you know, to look at this stuff and see what other people do with it while you focus on getting your direct mail and your telephone and the basics working. Um, you know, they're not going anywhere anytime right. soon. So, so you know, th- that stuff is tried and tested and you can use it. And you can you can wait and see, you know, because, I mean, people talk about, like, Bitcoin is the future and SMS is the future, and they might well be because they're really cool. So they might not. They might not even exist in three years, you know, right. because technology is moving so fast. So, so, so. I mean, I would say wait. You know, there's nothing wrong with being, uh, with not being the first to the race. You know, uh, innovation doesn't mean 
being the first in the world to do something. Innovation is you doing something for the first time. Right. Um, so if that might be direct mail, which isn't, it's not sexy, but it is innovative if, you, if you're not doing it. Yeah, and it works pretty well. <laughs> it does for a lot of people, yeah, they rely on it. Well, good advice. Be cynical. This is maybe one of the few times that <laughs> okay. would be cynical. Slow down, think about things for a minute before you put them into the action. And um, I mean, like 60% of people who watch Boomerang TV raise a lot more money, I, I have found. So that's a big Yeah, thing. yeah. They, Just kidding. Well, they're going to go on to donate to Boomerang now, aren't right. they? Right. Half of them. I know I am. <laughs> Good. Well, Simon, this was awesome. Great advice. Um, and you've got, you just rolled out a, a really cool new project. Uh, tell people about that before we, we close it up here. Good charity? Yeah. Uh, yeah, OK. That, that actually wasn't even uh, scripted. <laughs> that, that was a genuine was. surprise. Yeah, um, that, so a few of us uh, in Ireland, um, you know, myself with uh, Docus, The Wheel, Fundraising Ireland, and White Barn Consultant, we, we set up this website, goodcharity.ie, um, and it's to help charities communicate to the public um, what makes a good charity. I mean, most of us in the sector know that admin costs and salaries are, are not how you measure a charity, but obviously the public doesn't. So this is, goodcharity.ie is like a tool um, to put out to the public and to help Charities communicate with the public, and and the reception has been really good in Ireland so far. Hopefully, um, other people in other countries will like it as well. But yeah. um, yeah, we're pretty happy with it. Definitely, I'll link to all that. Everybody's got to check that out. Read Simon's blog on total fundraising. Really awesome advice. Follow him on Twitter. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. My oh. blog is at my blog is actually on changefundraising.com. Okay, we'll definitely link to that and uh, follow you on Twitter too. Your tweets are often uh, hilarious and irreverent and very entertaining. So. <laughs> Thank you. And likewise, Stephen, you're one of my favorite tweeters and bloggers. Oh, stop. So. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. People, that, people don't want to hear this. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do this in a private conversation. Yeah, we will. Simon, thanks for joining us. Thanks for sharing yeah. all your advice. Uh, my pleasure. And uh, get some sleep. It's, it's late over there, isn't it? Um, I don't know what time it is, but yeah, I'm always tired, so <laughs> I'll get some sleep. Okay, my friend. We'll talk to you soon, and we will catch you on the next episode. We'll have someone... Uh, just as smart as Simon here sharing some good advice. So check us out, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye, Stephen. Thank you.